Basilica of St. Mary Major has its own Sistine Chapel. While it doesn't feature Michelangelo's Last Judgment and there are no frescoes depicting the creation of man, there is a touch of Michelangelo on one of the world's largest tabernacles, and this chapel holds the first ever nativity scene figurines. Oggi noi la chiamiamo Cappella Sistina per ricordare Sisto V. We now call it the Sistine Chapel to remember Sixtus V. In truth, ancient documents refer to it as the Nativity Chapel, as it was built here to commemorate the birth of Christ. The relic of the Holy Cradle coming from Bethlehem was preserved here. This location, more or less where we are now, housed the first oratory and church dedicated to the Nativity of Christ, where the relic was kept. So what does Pope Sixtus do? He and his architect, Domenico Fontana, face a challenge. They cannot demolish the ancient chapel where the holy relic is preserved. Instead, they enclose the chapel in a box, essentially lifting this massive structure and move it here below using hoists exactly here. Hence, what we see today resembling a crypt or confessional is, in reality, the medieval chapel of the holy relic of Bethlehem. Pope Sixtus V also had this chapel built to commemorate the nativity scene desired by Nicholas IV, another Franciscan pope and the first Franciscan pope. In this chapel, indeed, the first nativity scene in history was preserved, and it is still preserved today. St. Francis had established the living nativity scene in Grecio, and within a few years, the tradition of the nativity scene spread. However, the creche, as we now know it, was born here, and originally kept in this little chapel, together with the relics of the nativity, the manger from Bethlehem. The Pope is sculpted praying in front of the manger, but his gaze is directed towards the altar, where the transubstantiation takes place. The altar complex reflects the spirit of the Tridentine Council. The tabernacle is built according to the norms of St. Charles Borromeo. Quindi so this tabernacle is perfectly aligned with the Nativity Chapel. We have, therefore, a crucial, theologically significant passage, as desired by Pope Sixtus, the incarnation of Christ in the lower part, with a relic of the Holy Cradle and the depiction of the Nativity. The tabernacle, where the Council of Trent tells us that the host is the true body of Christ, is adjacent to the altar. So the altar, immediately next to the tabernacle, and this verticality that rises precisely to the dome center is where a choir of angels portrays God the Father. Thus, the entire chapel is built along a line that, from the incarnation of Christ in the medieval chapel, in the nativity scene, ascends to the glory of God the Father. This axis precisely marks the entire structure that revolves around this marvelous monument. These are some of the most precious stones that existed in the 16th century. Pope Sixtus doesn't look at the money, Pope Sixtus must build the most precious tabernacle in the city. Above, there are figures of the Twelve Apostles, as written by St. Charles, and there are depictions of eight scenes of the Passion of Christ. At least three of these scenes are made in gilded bronze, based on designs by Michelangelo. Michelangelo was already deceased, but Ludovica del Duca, one of his students, used three famous drawings by Michelangelo to create three scenes of the Passion of Christ. The tabernacle is a historical and spiritual testament, emphasizing the constant incarnation of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament and His Passion and Resurrection. In the next episode, we'll continue to follow Guido Santi to discover another treasure that the Basilica enshrines, the ancient icon Salus Populi Romani, attributed to the brush of St. Luke the Evangelist. 